Hello, a warm welcome to this month's Bible study session. If you'd like to get your Bibles ready for tonight's session, I myself shall be reading from the King James Bible. As you settle down for the Christmas season, I felt that I would remind you that we do not know the exact time of when Jesus was born and therefore our festive season is not a true representation of the actual time of the birth of Jesus. It is to be considered for what it is, a reenactment of what happened at the time of his birth. So forgive me if you do not agree with the format of my Bible study to not include a detailed account of Jesus' birth. In due course of our studies, we will come to that point where we shall be reviewing the events of our Saviour's birth. But remember, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete equipped for every good work. I believe attention should be given to righteousness and righteous living and that this is to be the priority. So tonight, we, as we continue our study of the book of Genesis, it is to this objective we shall be turning our focus. Our prayer focus this evening is Psalm 136. So if you'd like to go to Psalm 136 in your Bibles, um, that's where we shall be praying from tonight. Okay. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Thank you, Lord. I love you, I adore you, I honour you, I respect you, I desire you, I need you, I want you, I choose you. You are my everything, I adore you, you are magnificent, you are wonderful, you are perfect, you are holy. Without you, I cannot imagine what life would be like. You are so powerful and you know all there is to know about me. You are a good, good father, a good God, a good Lord, a good master, a good provider, a good friend. Your love is great and surpasses all understanding. A love that no one can fathom. A love that lasts forever and ever, never fading. Even when we do wrong, in your sight you correct us out of love. For that I thank you. I thank you for making it possible once again for me to come into your presence. On this, our last Bible study session of the year 2019. You endure. To endure, this means tolerate. How much you tolerate of me each day, I cannot comprehend. As your standard are, standards are high, and I know that I must do things that are strange in your sight and are not compliant with what you would consider reasonable, acceptable behaviour. But Lord... I am a willing servant, willing to be obedient. If you will just teach me how to hear you, teach me how to do what you want me to do in the way you want me to do it. Teach me patience, patience first of all with my imperfections, patience with my fellow man, patience with my process. Teach me to endure as you do. Give thanks to the God of gods for his steadfast love endures forever. Thank you, Lord. You are God. There is none other than you. You are the one and true living God. There are no other gods but you. As you indicated to Jonah and the people of Nineveh, when they worshipped Moloch, and when all your people in the past took on idols, you showed yourself mighty and dependable and worthy of all praise. When the prophets of Baal stood against your servant Elijah, you showed yourself mighty among them. When Moses went up against Pharaoh, you showed yourself mighty to them. When King David fought all his battles, you showed yourself mighty in battle. When your servants had needs, you provided. When you promised Sarai a child, you kept your promise, although it looked like you had forgotten and the situation was impossible. You promised Abraham that he would be a father of many nations. You kept your promise. You made the ultimate promise of a saviour and you gave us Jesus. You kept your promise. Henceforth, I believe you now and always that you will make come to pass whatever you open our eyes to and ears, open our ears and our eyes to see and hear tonight. 
So Father, as we embark once again in this Bible study session, we very much want your presence as all one and only, as our one and only true and living God. As we come to learn more about you and to have much revelation, Father, we love you, we welcome you, we welcome you, Holy Ghost. Let us commune with you in love, in your steadfast love. To him who alone does great wonders, for his steadfast love endures forever. Father, we direct our prayers tonight to you, as always it cannot be to anyone else. Who else hears our prayers? Who else answers our prayers? Who deals sensitively with our hopes and fears? No one other than you. You who are compassionate, you who is full of grace and mercy, you whom gives us faith. So once again, we ask you to open our ears tonight, Father God, that we may hear what you are saying to us in tonight's message. How does this apply to our lives? To him who, by understanding, made the heavens, for his steadfast love endures forever. Only you could understand how to construct the heavens. You made the blueprint, you knew the end from the beginning, and as such you were able to make the heavens. You know every need, past, present and future, for every living thing. This qualified you to be the one to make the vital things that our spirit requires. It is our spirit that is the most important aspect of our lives, that needs to be maintained. All things spiritual, we know, is your sole responsibility. It is to you we come for a refreshing of our spirit, a strengthening of our spirit. Through the valuable resources you made accessible to us in the heavens, teach us how to access these areas and what each aspect is for. We thank you for your enduring love in the detail in which you made the heavens on our behalf. Always mindful of us, and our needs, even when we were babes and unaware of what we would require. Only a parent could exhibit such love and consideration. Hence why we call you our Heavenly Father. What did we do to deserve such consideration? Thank you, Father. To him who spread out the earth above the waters, for his steadfast love endures forever. The ingenious way in which you arranged the earth above the waters further illustrates and demonstrates your superiority as the master designer, the master engineer of creation, a perfect example to follow and, and to aspire to be like. All of this was done out of love. There was no animosity or ill will you had towards us when you made this arrangement. You had our very, every consideration in mind when you did this. To him who made the great lights for his steadfast loves endure forever. Without the light, we would have been in the night time forever. We would never have seen how beautiful the countryside looks in the morning or seen the trees, the birds and the beautiful array of coloured butterflies and indigenous species that surround us. We would have only had one half of the coin. We would not have our senses fully awakened. We would have been in constant sleep mode, having to get up in the dark and work in the dark with limited light resources. Our eyes would only be accustomed to darkness. We would not be able to discern the seasons. We know how important it is to discern the seasons as it pertains to your works. All of this you did through love. The sun to rule over the day, for his steadfast love endures forever. You made the sun to rule over the day due to its heat and its brightness. What an excellent choice. It has so many properties, as we know, it is instrumental of the growth and survival of many plant species which provide valuable food for us. All of this you did through love. The moon and stars to rule over the night for his steadfast love endures forever. You made the moon and the stars, the lesser light, providing just enough light for us to see in the dark, but not so overbearing that we cannot obtain rest. All of this you did through love. Amen. Now, last time we covered chapter 37 and 38 of Gen the book of Genesis. So if you'd like to actually turn to the book of Genesis now, um, to roughly around about those chapters, whilst I go through this recap. And last time we observed that the patriarchs were far from being perfect people 
and that Jesus was our only hope of true salvation. We saw that Judah had promised his son to Tamar and never fulfilled that promise. As a result, she tricked him into having sex with him and fathering a child. So tonight we continue our story um, from the book of Genesis and we're starting to read from chapter 39. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he had to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had saved the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favoured. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused, and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wotteth not what in, what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time, that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled for that she called unto the men of her house, and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in an Hebrew unto us to mark us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home, and she spake unto his uh, unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me, and it came to pass as I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled out, and it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying. After this manner did they, thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favour in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison 
committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison, and whatsoever they did there, he was the, the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to any that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him. That which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Okay, so that was the story of Joseph and Potiphar's wife. Okay, the key verse here we feel is verse 9, uh, which is the question, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So that was Joseph exhibiting his righteousness and his right thoughts um, towards decent behaviour. And then a key connective was verse 21, but the Lord um, uh, was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favour in the sight of the keeper of the prison. So Joseph basically flourished in the prison, even though he was under such hardship. As we see, he's given responsibility over the other prisoners. Now we can see that Joseph faced great temptation here and how he responded to it. So how many of us would respond as Joseph did? How many of us would not? Why did Joseph respond as he did? He was a righteous man before God. His heart and mind was pure, healthy. Foundation he had was love of his father and his mother, and he knew God. And as we can see, Potiphar's wife, the spirit was that of Satan, really speaking through her to tempt Joseph. Moving on, we read from chapter 40. And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them inward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season inward. And they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Jesus said unto them, Do not inter interpretations belong to God? Tell me then, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me, and in the vine were their branches, and it was although it budded, and her blossoms shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou wast his butler. But think on me when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. When the chief baker saw 
that the interpretation was good. He said unto Joseph, I also was in my dream, and behold, I had three white baskets on my head, and in the uppermost basket there was of all manner of baker meats for Pharaoh, and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head. And Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days, yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee, and shall hang thee on a tree, and the bird shall eat thy flesh from off thee. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler, and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again, and he gave the cup unto Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them, and yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. Now the key verse here was verse 7 with a question, wherefore look ye so sadly today? Okay, so that was Joseph being concerned about his fellow prisoner um, and not just looking to himself. And it's through that probing of being concerned for someone else and not totally selfish that um, he's able to use his gift. Um, and verse 8, do not interpretations belong to God. That was his response um, in terms of the dreams that they saw. So that was his way of responding to, to give God the honour um, for what um, he was about to do. Um, and in verse 23, yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph but forgot him, which is obviously quite a terrible thing to do really it someone's just helped you out and you've completely forgotten them or they said to remember them when 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 you're out there you know um so i feel from this as a christmas and new year's message here office parties festive parties in general holiday season is a time for families okay Sometimes you get temptations and I just feel, be righteous, use common sense. If you're married, your wife's not there. If you're married, your husband's not there at the party. Act responsibly. Make sure you get home at a good time. And keep in communication with your partner. And don't do anything silly that would make you have to think and disrupt your life when you get home so have a really great christmas and a happy new year and that's the end of tonight's bible study it was short and sweet wasn't it but i hope you enjoyed it and i hope to see you next year in january of 2020 so i just want to pray that you have a very blessed festive season and um, I hope you enjoyed that message and you take it very much to heart. Righteous living is the key, the only way. I um, just want to thank you for joining me tonight. And once again, I just hope I see you in the new year. God be willing. Okay, take care. Bye bye.